Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about bladder innervation. Okay, the bladder innervation. Now, see, here I am showing you the bladder. This is a urinary bladder, which is receiving the urine. Okay, which is receiving the urine through the ureters. Okay, here are the ureters from the both the kidneys and from the ureter, urine is going to come and collect in this sac, which is called as a bladder. Now, from the bladder, see, this is the urethra, which is going into the penis or into the vulva into the female now this is the bladder this is the urethra now this urethra is having how many sphincters now this urethra it have two sphincters that is external urethral sphincter and internal urethral sphincter so in brief i have shown you the bladder okay bladder with the urethra and the external urethral sphincter and internal urethral sphincter okay done now remember this bladder is having a muscle okay the bladder is surrounded by a smooth muscle now what is the smooth muscle surrounding the bladder which is called as a detrusor the, the smooth muscle surrounding the bladder is called as a detrusor muscle now we all know that smooth muscle skeletal muscle they will only contract whenever they are having a innervation okay there should be an innervation now point is that this bladder is getting the nerve innervation from which nerves sympathetic nerves parasympathetic nerves or somatic nerves now let's see this is a spinal cord okay here is a spinal cord now this spinal cord like you know from the spinal cord we all know spinal nerves will come right see now this is a t10 segment t10 t11 t12 l1 l2 now see the sympathetic nerves these sympathetic nerves okay from t10 to l2 now these spinal nerves okay now the spinal nerves they have the sympathetic fibers why because we know thoracolumbar outflow the thoracolumbar outflow is carrying sympathetic fibers but anyway simply i'm speaking see the sympathetic fibers are coming these are the preganglionic sympathetic fibers now this preganglionic sympathetic fibers where they are going they will go into the first sympathetic trunk okay they will go into the sympathetic trunk now from there they are going to this one ganglion called as the hypogastric ganglion okay they are going to the hypogastric ganglion from from the hypogastric ganglion now these are the hypogastric nerves okay these are the hypogastric nerves they are going to the bladder detrusor muscle so sympathetic innervation is there to the bladder true okay we all know whenever there is sympathetic activation in the body sympathetic activation in the body now what happened to the urination urination decreases okay so whenever there is sympathetic activation you need to fight or flight away from that region okay now that's not the time to relax and take a piss no that's not a time that time we don't want any urination or the jt activities so sympathetic nervous system what is the sympathetic innervation of the bladder the sympathetic innervation of the bladder is coming from T10 to L2 segments. Okay, by the hypogastric ganglion. Now, see, there is sympathetic innervation. Where the sympathetic innervation is going? The sympathetic innervation is going to the detrusor muscle. Now, what happened to the detrusor muscle? Whenever there is this sympathetic activation, now the detrusor muscle is contracted or relaxed? The detrusor muscle is relaxed. No contraction. The contraction of the detrusor muscle will cause urine let out. Okay, urine movement, urine flow. Okay, urination. Now, whenever the sympathetic activity is more, Okay, now what happened to the detrusor muscle? Detrusor muscle is relaxed like this, relaxed. But see, the sympathetic innervation is also going, this orange color fiber, sympathetic fibers are also going to the internal urethral sphincter. Now what happens whenever there is sympathetic activation? Now the sympathetic activation is going to cause the contraction, it's going to contraction of the internal urethral sphincter. If, there is the, if this is the urethra, now this is the internal urethral sphincter. Now that internal urethral sphincter is not relaxed, it is tightly contracted. Oh, we don't want urination, right? So this is contracted. The bladder muscle, detrusor is relaxed, but the internal urethral sphincter is contracted, preventing the urination. Preventing the urination. Okay. Okay. Done. Now, see, let's talk about the parasympathetic supply now. Now, parasympathetic supply is coming from. Please look at this image, guys. Parasympathetic uh, outflow is coming from S2, S3, S4. Now, S2, S3, S4 segments of the spinal cord is giving rise to parasympathetic fibers. Okay, these are the parasympathetic fibers. Now, these parasympathetic fibers, they are going to the pelvic ganglion. Okay, they are going to the pelvic ganglion. From the pelvic ganglion, see, this pelvic nerves are coming. These are the pelvic nerves, okay, which are also called as nervi agentis. Okay, now, these are the parasympathetic fibers. Now, see, please look at here, the parasympathetic fiber is also going to the detrusor muscle. Now, what happens whenever you are relaxed, whenever the parasympathetic activity is there in the body? Now, what happens? Now, this parasympathetic nerves are going to the detrusor muscle and it will cause contraction of the detrusor muscle. The contraction of the detrusor muscle will cause urination, we know. When the detrusor muscle is contracting, now it will push the urine down into the 
Urethra. Now at the same time, see, now this pelvic ganglion, okay, from the pelvic ganglion, this parasympathetic nerves are coming, right? Now this parasympathetic nerve, like no, this is the nerve, it's a pelvic nerve. Now it is going where? It is going to the internal urethral sphincter. Now what it will do? Now it will cause relaxation. Now these parasympathetic fibers, they will cause relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter. Okay. So urine is now going to come into the urethra. urethra. But now comes the problem. See, bladder is contracting. Okay. Done. Urine is coming into the urethra. Now even the internal urethral sphincter is relaxed. Okay. Urine now enter into the urethra. But problem is, see the external urethral sphincter. Now the external urethral sphincter is not innervated by the sympathetic fibers or parasympathetic fibers. See, sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers, they are the part of autonomic nervous system, right? They are the part of autonomic nervous system. Okay. So these actions, like you know, the contraction of the detrusor muscle, okay, or relaxation or contraction of the external urethral sphincter, they are not under your control. Okay. They are not under your control. Okay. They are autonomic functions. But the external urethral sphincter, the external urethral sphincter, see, it is getting a fiber. What is this fiber? This is a motor neuron. Okay, this is a motor neuron. See, it's a somatic, somatic fiber. Somatic fibers means, like, you know, this, these are the alpha motor neurons which will control the muscle contraction. Now, what is this muscle? This is the external urethral sphincter. This is also a muscle, right? This is also a muscle. Now, the point which I want you to know is, so this muscle, okay, this muscle, is under your voluntary control. So if it is voluntary control, it is innervated by, it is innervated by somatic nerve, somatic nerve, not an autonomic nerve. This is a somatic nerve, which is called as the pudendal nerve. Now it is coming from which region? See again, S2, S3, S4, they are not only giving rise to the parasympathetic fibers, but S2, S3, S4, they are also giving rise to the, uh, they are also giving rise to the somatic fibers. Now here are the nuclei present in the S2. In the S3 and in the S4 segments, there is this one nuclei present called as the one-off nucleus. Okay, one-off nucleus. From the one-off nucleus, the somatic fibers, okay, the somatic fibers are going to originate and they will fuse, okay, from S2, S3, S4, the sympathetic, uh, the somatic, not sympathetic, the somatic fibers, they will fuse and form a nerve which is called as a pudendal nerve. Now, this pudendal nerve, root value is what? The pudendal nerve root value is S2, S3, S4. Where it is going? It is going to the external urethral sphincter. What it will do? It will cause relaxation of external urethral sphincter okay whenever you need it it will relax whenever you want it it will contract so usually usually 24 by 7 what happens is this somatic nerve it will cause the contraction it will cause the contraction of the external urethral sphincter it will cause the contraction of the external urethral sphincter normally normally 24 by 7 otherwise there will be urination right so whenever you are urinating okay whenever you want to urinate what happens now you need to Inhibit the pudendal nerve. You need to inhibit the pudendal nerve. So the inhibition of pudendal nerve will cause relaxation of the external urethral sphincter so that urination will happen. So during urination, what do you need? What do you want to need? So during urination, you need to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. The bladder should be contracted. Now this parasympathetic activation will cause relaxation. Relaxation of the external urethral sphincter. Okay, relaxation of sorry, not external, relaxation of internal urethral sphincter. And at the same time, the pudendal nerve need to be inhibited. When the pudendal nerve is inhibited, now the external urethral sphincter is also relaxed so that urination will happen. Okay. So, in general, this is the innervation about the bladder. Okay. Innervation about the bladder. So, parasympathetic supply is coming from S2, S3, S4, which will cause the contraction of the detrusor muscle. Contraction of, it's all the same thing. It's causes the contraction of detrusor muscle. And not only that, it will cause relaxation, relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter. The internal urethral sphincter is relaxed and during urination what do you need to do the one off nucleus yes one off nucleus is giving rise to pudendal nerve okay now what is pudendal nerve is doing the pudendal nerve will cause the contraction of external urethral sphincter but during urination the external urethral sphincter need to be relaxed see sympathetic supply is not of that importance the okay, sympathetic supply as yes, we have discussed is coming from the t10 to l2 see it does not have much role in micturition during micturition it does not have a big role it actually prevents the retrograde ejaculation one important point which i want you to know is see it will prevent the retrograde ejaculation so with this we are done with the bladder innervation part now after this let's talk about the micturition reflex so how actually the micturition happens okay micturition reflex now let's go one by one guys now first your urinary bladder is getting filled with the urine so filling of the urinary bladder now after that what happens when the urinary bladder is getting filled with the urine so urinary bladder is getting filled 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 like this now what happens? There is stimulation of the stretch receptors in the urinary bladder. See, there are these volume sensing receptors present. Like you know, urinary bladder is getting stretched. 
Now when the urinary blood is getting stretched, now the stretch receptors, not sorry, not all volume sensitive receptors, the stretch receptors. Now the stretch receptors are activated. Okay, now the stretch receptors are activated. Now the stretch receptors, now what they are doing? Now they are giving the afferent impulses via the pelvic nerve. Okay, via the pelvic nerve. See, pelvic nerves are also sensory nerves. Now, via the pelvic nerve, the information is going to the central nervous system that the bladder is getting filled, the bladder is getting distended. Okay, now see, to, to which part of the spinal cord the information is going? The information is going to the sacral segments of the spinal cord. Okay, to S2, S3, S4. Now, the information is going to the spinal cord via the pelvic nerves. So, pelvic nerves are what? Pelvic nerves are the afferents. Pelvic nerves are the afferents. Now, this information that bladder is getting distended, it gone into the central nervous system. That's the spinal cord. Now, from here, what happens? Now, the spinal cord, it will give the efferent impulses via the same pelvic nerve. Okay, now the efferent impulses are going back to the bladder via the pelvic nerve. See, this pelvic nerve is nothing but the parasympathetic. Like, you know, we have discussed, right? See, here, pelvic nerve. Pelvic nerve is carrying what? It's carrying the parasympathetic outflow. So now what is happening? Now the spinal cord is activated. Now the spinal cord is going to activate. Okay, now it's going to activate the parasympathetic outflow. Okay, the pelvic nerve is getting activated. Now when the pelvic nerve is activated, what happens? We have discussed the bladder should be contracted. See, there is contraction of the detrusor muscle. So the detrusor muscle is going to be contracted. Okay. Now when the detrusor muscle is contracted, what happened to the internal urethral sphincter? Now the internal urethral sphincter is, see, internal sphincter is getting relaxed. The internal urethral sphincter is relaxed. Okay, done. Now later what happens? See, bladder is contracted. Okay, done. Now, urine is going into the urethra. Now, the internal urethral sphincter is also relaxed. Now what? Now the bladder, now the urine. Now the urine is coming down into the urethra. Now what you need to do? You need to relax the external urethral sphincter. Okay, you need to relax the external urethral sphincter. Okay. Now, how exactly we will relax the external urethral sphincter? How we will do that? See, Contraction of the detrusor muscle, okay, completed. Relaxation of the internal urethral sphincter, completed. Now, the urine, see, now the urine is going into the urethra. Now, the urine, where it is going? Now, the urine is going to the urethra. Now, in the urethra, see, now in the urethra, there are stretch receptors present. Now, when the urine comes into the urethra, now the stretch receptors, now the stretch receptors in the urethra are stimulated. Okay, now, again, this information, this information will go to the Central nervous system. This information will go to the central nervous system via the pelvic nerves. Okay, the afferent impulses are going via the pelvic nerve. Now, what happens now in the center? Okay, now what happens? The onaf's nucleus is inhibited. Or the pudendal nerve. Okay, the pudendal nerve is inhibited. Now, when the pudendal nerve is inhibited, means what happens? When the pudendal nerve is inhibited, means automatically the external urethral sphincter, external urethral sphincter is relaxed. When the external urethral sphincter relaxes, there will be voiding of the urine. Okay, voiding of the urine or the voiding of the bladder, I should say. Okay, bladder will be emptied. So with this, we are done with the we are done with the micturition reflex. Now, after this, let's discuss about systometrogram. Okay, now what is the systometrogram? It's very simple. Okay, it's the pressure changes in the bladder. Systometrogram, we are going to discuss about the pressure changes in the bladder. Now, please concentrate guys here. Here, on this x-axis, I am talking about the intravesical volume. Intravesical volume means the volume of urine in the bladder. Okay, the volume of urine in the bladder. On the, uh, on the y-axis, I am showing you the pressure in the bladder. The pressure in the bladder. Okay, the pressure in the bladder. Now, see guys. Now, the bladder is getting filled with the urine. Okay, bladder is getting filled with the urine. Now, when the bladder is getting filled with the urine, don't think the pressure is going to raise quickly. Why? Right? Because when the urine is coming to the bladder, the pressure is not elevated. The pressure is not going to be increased. Why? Because with the upcoming urine, the bladder will be distended. The bladder will be distended. Okay. So, there is no raise in pressure. Why? Because if only urine is coming, means that will increase the pressure. But bladder is distending. So, see, initially, bladder filling is starting. Like at one year point, the bladder filling is starting. Now, at 1B, what is happening? The bladder is getting distended. See, please concentrate. 1A, bladder filling start on small raise in pressure. Okay. But the pressure is not going like this. What happens? Bladder filling is continued. All this 1B. Bladder filling is continued. But there is no sharp raise in pressure. Why? Because bladder is distending. So, pressure is almost constant. Not sharp raise. Almost constant. Almost constant. But... What happens? See, when you reach the intravesical volume of 400, okay, almost 400, when you reach the intravesical volume of 400, now there is a very sharp raise in pressure. There is a very sharp raise in 
pressure. So now let's discuss some important MCQs. See now when you will have the first urge to void. Okay, the first urge to void is seen at 150 ml. When you have 150 ml of urine inside the bladder. Okay, when you have 150 ml of urine inside the bladder, then you will have the first sensation. Okay, stretch receptors are stimulated. Then you will have the first like you know sensation like I should go for the urination. Now, when you will have marked sensation of bladder fullness, the marked sensation of bladder fullness is seen at 400 ml, which means when you have 400 ml of urine in the, inside the bladder, now there is no more further distension of the bladder. Now, there is sharp raise in pressure that will give you a powerful stimulation that you should go for the urination. Okay, so these are the systometrogram, which is nothing but show, which is showing you the volume changes and the pressure changes volume changes in the bladder and the pressure changes in the bladder not only that i want you to know some important points that see this urination okay it seems like you know yeah it's uh, involuntary yes of course it is involuntary but not only that whenever you want okay whenever you want you can actually go for the urination okay you this urination yes it is involuntary but it is also voluntary which means even the higher centers in the brain, okay, even the higher centers in the brain and brainstem can influence the urination. So, now what are the facilitatory centers? Okay, now write down here, what are the facilitatory centers? Okay, facilitatory centers of micturition, facilitatory centers of the micturition. The facilitatory centers include, okay, paracentral lobule of the cortex, para central lobule. See the paracentral lobule of the cortex is actually facilitating it when you wish it will kick start the urination. Okay, paracentral lobule of the cortex and pons and Borington center. Now, these are the centers. Okay, these are the higher centers which are present in the brain which will facilitate, okay, which will facilitate the micturition. But there is also inhibitory center of the micturition. Okay, inhibitory center of the micturition. When you wish, you can hold the urine. So, inhibitory center. Okay, so inhibitory center. Now, inhibitory center of micturition is present in midbrain. Okay, so there are three facilitatory centers and one inhibitory center. The inhibitory center of the micturition is present in midbrain. So with this, we are done with the bladder innervation and micturition reflex as well as with the systematogram. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.